Welcome back you here at Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about a degree in history, or as some would say, that major belongs in a museum. Now we know that history is not typically on the top ranked majors to pursue list because, let's face it, you are looking at the past, which for a lot of people, that has no relevance to the present. Well, it's an ignorant position to take because if you understand human civilization in days gone by, then you will usually be able to better explain and sometimes predict what's going to happen next. So we just have to account for the fact that we live in a neoliberal simping world. Everyone is, you know, whatever's good for a corporation, brah. But that being said, I thought we would discuss some possibilities if you choose this course of study such that you're not going to come out with a bunch of debt but no prospects beyond retail or just unpaid internships. So let us commence. Take a look at the BLS here for historians. Only 3% growth in 100 jobs, so not terribly uh, exciting or surprising, I would say. It's worth noting, this is from one school they talk about, of all the PhDs awarded in this period of, I think it was 1997 to 2015, only about half had tenure-track jobs. So maybe others went to work in think tanks, and that's something you should pay attention to. If you're not necessarily going to go the academic route, take a look at think tanks, because you can actually make better money sooner and not have to deal with the whole problem of can you get tenure. Here, too, just gives you a sense. This is 2008, so I'm trying to give a little bit of a perspective, I suppose. Just gives you an idea of the overall growth. And here they say, well... You have more people getting the history PhDs, and the jobs appear to be keeping pace. Now, whether those jobs are always tenure track, debatable. You might be an adjunct, and that's one of the big problems that even the colleges have started going in the direction of a lot of businesses, of part-time employees, the adjunct or assistant professors, where you don't have any real job security and you don't make that much money. So be aware of that as you delve into the wonderful world of history. Another one I wanted to bring up, this is archivists, curators, and museum workers, and tangentially historical preservation. Now, I realize if you major in history at most schools, that's not exactly historical preservation, although I have heard of people who did history and got into that field. It will require, of course, that you start pursuing internships while you are a student, look into those opportunities, because there aren't so many jobs available and to start with, it's not necessarily highly paid, but if you get up to that level and you're like a museum director, you could be doing very well. So don't entirely dismiss that possibility. If there is a historical preservation major at your school, that's something to look at, or certainly taking classes, looking for research opportunities in that sector. Um, regardless of whether you're going to go the academic route or not, even if you want to do historical preservation, it is recommended you do some kind of independent study, maybe do the honors program, get a thesis to show that you're capable of producing research on your own without relying on, you know, someone else to do it for you. And here we have also more information regarding faculty positions. This is more recent, actually. There was a slight increase. It went from 295 to 320. So, there are possibilities. You have to weigh that against how many people are graduating with PhDs and which schools they're coming from, because there might very well be someone who comes from the top history program. If you go to a smaller school, you'd be in a probably disadvantaged position, depending on the circumstances. As far as job possibilities, I've known some people who have gone this route. Military, uh, you can look at the Navy. It's a little bit harder to get into for officership. Air Force is difficult to get into if you don't have a technical degree, but Army is more inviting military intelligence. That is a good possibility. And then you might be able to, if you stay in long enough, they might pay for your master's. You could keep going in that direction if you want to get a PhD as well. Advantage there, you can get part or some of your college paid for. I still think they have a student loan repayment program. And uh, it's a stable career. Downside is there could be a war. Do you want to be mixed up in that? So it's going to be a trade-off. Here, if you're looking at the preservation routes, this is pulled up. And obviously, over time, these will 
be outdated, but you can just check out this website. It's called Preservation Leadership Forum for internships and opportunities to move up in that field if it so uh, appeals to you. And finally, you have history teachers, which that's not the most in-demand profession, so you might find yourself having to teach ESL or even mathematics, science, but that is one option. What I would do if that's what you are looking towards, do your four-year and stay on one other if you have an education school and just do the four plus one and get your teaching license so you're ready to go. Don't mess around with, oh, I'm going to do undergraduate and get some teaching experience because usually most school districts, if you have the master's, they will pay you more starting out by like five or six grand. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, will being considered history, it's not the best major if you're looking at it from a financial standpoint, but there is a way to forge a path. You just have to make sure you're not getting into too much debt and you have a specific idea of what you're going to do, not, well, I'll find my way. I just want to study history for the sake of history, because if that's the case, you got your library, you got internet.com, you can buy books on Amazon. You don't need to spend all this money and then you have no real career prospects, but you're being buried in debt.